everyone welcome to new bear i'm monique and today is the first video in a little mini series on butterflies the design we're working today is a beautiful onion ring butterfly designed by hope green the pattern can be found at the online tatting class web page i will leave a link for the page down below before we start i'd like to thank georgia sites and tammy montgomery for allowing me to include this pattern in my series i'd also like to thank sue fuller for organizing the website of things for me now if you need a little bit of extra help with your onion ring technique i do have a slower more detailed version i will include the link for that video again in the description box below I also include a couple of tips on different ways of tying your antenna for your butterfly. So let's go make Wilma. Well, of course I've named my butterfly. <laughs> You've got to name your butterflies. Before we start any tatting, I'm going to show you two different ways we can tie our antenna. Now that might seem a little weird since we don't have any butterflies yet, but I want to show you this first up because the way we tie the antenna will determine how much thread we need to leave for the tail. If you don't have a lot of thread, you won't want to be excessive with your antenna knots. You might finish up a shuttle with just enough for your butterfly. If that's the case, a small single wrap knot will work well. We're going to pretend that I've got a butterfly back here. I'm just going to tie a loose knot. Each side. Tape my butterfly to the table, holding the end of the thread with your finger. Use something like a toothpick or a tapestry needle. I'm going to use my little wooden spike. Place that into the middle of the knot. Now we can position our knot wherever we want it to be. By doing the same thing with the other side. Again, our spike allows us to position the knot exactly where we want it. So we're able to make our antenna knots nice and even. If you have a little more thread to play with, Pass the end through the eye of a needle without splitting the ply is ideal. Hold the thread in your left hand about 10, maybe 12 centimeters back from the needle. Again, we have our imaginary butterfly back here holding the needle by its tip back it up so you can pinch the eye of the needle and the thread together. Take hold of the thread. I haven't got enough there. Take hold of the thread from above the needle, not the one down here. We want the thread from the top. Wrap your needle three times and then slide those wraps down along the needle, snug them together. This thread comes into the pinch. So if I can show you without losing the lot, that's what we have. Holding the wraps between your fingers, pull your needle through. we have a three wrapped knot. Just gives a little bit more bulk to the knot for our antenna. So the antenna you decide to use will dictate how much thread you need or rather the amount of thread you have will dictate which antenna you can use. Having a quick look at our pattern and the order of tatting. Ring one and ring two is our upper right wing. Our lower right wing is ring three and four. The lower left wing 
rings five and six. And the upper left wing rings seven and eight. To make Wilma, we are going to work with two shuttles. We have shuttle one and shuttle two. Take shuttle one, leave yourself a tail for your antenna. Our first ring has a count of nine adjoining Pico and nine. Using shuttle two, again we're leaving ourselves a tail. Hold the thread over the top of your first ring. Wrap your hand for a ring. As you make first half of the stitch, flip the stitch but don't pull it up. We're going to pass our ring through the loop. And then snug your stitch. Work second half. Our final stitch count is 12. We've just worked our first stitch, so we need another 11. We're about to work a double pico. For us to do that, our first pico needs to be quite long. So we're working a pico that measures three quarters of an inch when it's open. After working the pico, we're going to join our two rings together with an onion ring join. The type of join we use here is important because our second ring is a true ring, not a mock ring. Because it's a true ring, our core thread needs to slide so we can close our ring. So to make the join, bring stitches up so they sit next to the pico. Move your shuttle thread out of the way. Take your crochet hook down through the pico, pull up a loop from the thread that's around your hand, and run your shuttle through that loop. Wiggle and adjust. We're working a double stitch. We're ready to make our double pico. Reach down through the tall pico, pull up a loop from the thread that's around your hand, pass your shuttle, pass your shuttle through the loop. Use the pick on your shuttle to hold both legs of the pico the side. I'm going to try and angle this so you can see what I'm doing. As I pull the working thread down, it's going to pull the head of the pico towards the core thread. That splits our pico into two. And gives us a double pico. Work a double stitch. And then you can play a bit more with the height that you want that pico to be. Finishing out our ring with a count of eight, adjoining pico and three. We 
Now you probably find that your inner ring has pulled away from the base. That's okay. We're just going to pull on our tails to adjust its position. And now we can close our ring. Turning our ring slightly to the left, we swapping our shuttles again, going back to shuttle one. Up your hand for a ring. Our third ring has a count of six, joining Pico and six. As we start, we want to leave a small amount of thread between our rings, and that is because we need our rings to lie flat and not crowd each other. We need room to accommodate another onion ring in this space. Swap shuttles again. Ready to start our fourth ring. So we're doing the same thing as we did before. We're working the first half of the stitch, flipping it and not pulling it up. Pass your ring through the loop. And then snug the stitch. Work the second half. We have another two stitches. We're joining back to the second ring. Working five, a small decorative picot. Joining with an onion ring join. We're working a medium pico. Followed by another small pico. And we're working six. Joining pico and two. Turning our work to the left, swapping shuttles again. We're starting ring five. Using shuttle one, we're working six, joining Pico and six, leaving that small gap between our rings.
returning to your work and swapping your shuttles. Ring six begins with a count of two. Pass your ring through the loop before snugging it down. Join back to ring four. We're working six. We have a small decorative picot. An onion ring join. medium pico followed by a small decorative pico we're finishing a count of four joining pico and three Turning our work slightly to the left, swapping shuttles again. Our count is nine, adjoining Pico and nine. Leave that gap between your rings. To work in eight, we are swapping shuttles again. We're working three again, pass that loop, uh, that ring through the loop. Joining back to ring six. We have nine. We're working a long pico to get ready for our double pico. First, we need to make an onion ring join. So work, work your long pico. Doing our onion ring join.
double stitch. And now we're ready for our double picot. Reach down through the long picot, pull the loop up from the thread that's around your hand, pass your shuttle through, use the pick on your shuttle to hold the legs to the side while you pull the head of the picot down to the core thread. Adjust the height of the picots and secure with a double stitch. We're finishing out our ring with a count of 11. On the back, a little bit of our tails, our shuttles, I should say. I like to pair my threads. I'm going to tie a square knot. Going to tie my knots. And tape him down. I can position where I want that knot to be. Done. How cute is Wilma? I hope you've enjoyed making her as much as I did. Please post your photos to my new bear Facebook page. I'd love to see everyone's butterflies. See you next time. Mm -hmm.